My name is uh, Nathan Keith, and I'm a project manager for Centennial, and so I work for Tahoe Ranch. Hi, John Musella. I work on community outreach with the project. Good to see you all tonight, and thanks for coming out. We really appreciate it. And Nathan's going to give you a uh, great update on where we're at right now and where things are going in timeline, and uh, be able to answer some questions as well this evening. So, uh, thanks for coming out. For me, you guys can have this here. I uh, appreciate everyone coming out tonight and uh, being willing to give up a night to be here and listen. I'm sure for many of you, um, you've heard about this project for a long time, and at times it's been on the forefront, and at other times it has disappeared. Uh, we named it Centennial because we knew it'd take 100 years to get done, and so we're working on that. We're getting there, we're getting closer. Uh, no, it's really, we've never, the project has never stopped. What what has happened, though, is we've had to adjust at times for, for different um, curveballs that are thrown up with, at us, as well as, as we've worked with the county, um, there's been things that we've had to adjust on. So I'll just start back a little bit. So probably the last time that you really saw us active in the community was probably around 2009-10 time frame. Um, at the time, we were finishing up our specific plan and our EIR to be kind of released to the public, for the public to review it, learn about the community, learn what we're doing over there. Um, and, and during that time, the county, as some of you are aware of, and I know Richard was involved in that, um, the county was doing the uh, Antelope Valley area plan update, which included all of the Antelope Valley. So everything from the east side, central, all the way out to really I-5, and they called this, you know, the West Antelope Valley. And so they were changing a lot of the uh, land, a lot of the land um, there and, and the zoning throughout the whole, the, the whole Antelope Valley. And so we had to kind of stop our project at that time. Because what they were doing specifically on the own ranch property and others is they were changing the land zoning, they were changing the de designation. And the project that you probably have seen and been familiar with at times had to change in order to comply with what the county was doing. Um, so last, I guess it was last year, um, la yeah, last November, the county approved, the Board of Supervisors approved the Antelope Valley Area Plan. And so what that did is it kind of set the tone for us to, to tweak our project a little bit and then start moving forward. And so that's where we're at today. We have been able to adjust our project to match what the county is wanting out in the Yellow Valley area, area, the west, they call it the uh, west economic area. So I'm just going to grab this map, and I apologize, it's kind of hard to see a little bit. And for those in the back, they really apologize. Um, but this is this is the Centennial Project, and just to give you a reference, this is uh, State Route 138 right here. And as everyone knows, this is 300th Street right here. So from 300th Street, and it goes along. Here's Quail Lake. It's just not shown. And then here's where you start hooking into the I-5. So that, and I, I, this will be up. Um, so please come up, and you can ask questions and look at it a little bit more. Um, this is, the, this is the new Centennial Project, and I'll just give you a brief overview. This is kind of the, the, the quick details, is we have pulled back development from this west side. Uh, I should say, this is the west branch of the aqueduct, and the east branch runs up here on this side of it, just to give everyone a little reference. We have pulled back development more from the <coughs> west side and left open space, and more concentrated development here on the east side. Oh, it's open in between the two aqueduct ranges. So that's kind of what we had to uh, do. Um, does anybody remember the unit count before? Has anybody uh, been around for that long? Yeah, so we were at 23,000 homes before is where we were at. We are now down to 19,000 homes. So we have adjusted it. And again, this goes directly to the Los Angeles County area plan. So less homes out here, less square footage, uh, but the important thing, and then we'll get into this, is the amenities have not changed, the services that are coming to this area have not changed. Um, just because the unit count and square footage is, is lower doesn't mean that, that we are also getting less of those things. We are still committed 100% to bring that to, the, uh, to this community. And so, so you don't have to hold it the whole time. I will go ahead and, and put it back over here. But please feel free to come look at it. And if you need it for reference, I can pull it up. 
something. So a couple things about it. I just mentioned we're at 19,000 units now. Um, some of the services we are bringing, and, we, and so we are working through the process right now with the EIR with the county, and so we're in the process of meeting with the different county departments, which include sheriff, fire, parks and rec, library, all that. And so through this, we are working on what we can bring out here and what they would want as mitigation for these new homes and new creation out here. Uh, we are going to be bringing on three new fire stations. We will be bringing on a sheriff station, a full service sheriff station. We'll be bringing on a, a brand new library as well. Um, and then as far as park acreage right now, we're at about 163 new acres of county park. Besides private park, pocket parks and stuff that will be run by an HOA or some amenity like that. So county parks, which will include a regional sports park with you know ball fields and all that. Um, that's a that's a 25 acre park. Uh, we actually have two of those. So those are the sort of things that we're bringing um, up to this project to be integrated into what we really call a master plan community. And what that means is it's all going to flow together, and it's not going to be piecemeal. It's not going to be housing heavy with no jobs. It's not going to be all jobs and you know no nobody can live there. The idea of a master plan community is you have a range of housing prices and a range of jobs so that those who work in the community and those who live in the surrounding areas can afford to live there or work there and that, that there's all types of jobs from CEO all the way down to you know just getting started in high school and you need that job to earn some extra money. So that's kind of the complete picture, the big picture of the community. Um, at the whole, at build out, is we are going to bring 19,000 permanent new jobs to this area. And that's that's that build out. And so I should say that we we are looking at this as being a 20-year build out. So it's not something that happens overnight, obviously. But with that, we you know, there's going to be phases. And the county and working with the county, we're required to um, bring on well, one thing is a, a full service sheriff station wouldn't be required day one. But what we've worked with the sheriff station is they're going to put a substation out here from day one. So before lumber's even on the ground, substation would be open. Uh, it, it basically an over the counter, something you can go into and someone can take your request. And I mean, as I know and you guys know better than I, you you know. Uh, Santa Clarita is the substation. That's a long way, you know. And I, I actually live down in Santa Clarita, and I, so I, I mean, I live right there, and that's a, that's a long drive for them for a call. So from day one, before any building permits or pull, there's going to be a um, sheriff over the counter station here. Same thing with with fire station. What we are, what they are proposing is fire station 77 will basically be. Um, upgraded and, 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 and to the point where they can service it until we get to a place that within the first phase that the first fire station will come on. And they want, um, you know, they want a large fire station battalion because they don't have one up in this area. So these are the sort of things that will come on and they'll come on early as we want to bring the services up. And so it's not just about creating a bedroom community up here, there'll be jobs as well. Um, I guess in real quick, yes, questions before. Okay, you mentioned jobs a couple times. Uh -huh. What kind of jobs are you talking about? There'll be a, a wide mix. We'll be bringing retail to the area. So there'll be um, everything from new restaurants and, um, you know, services, whether it be, you know, good services, haircut, whatever, those type of things, barbershops, to the business park, which is on the south side. Uh, and we envision... Uh, which is down here, the purple, sorry, uh, is, is this will be a business park type thing. Now, if we're, those of you who have driven down through Valencia and right as you're coming to the 126, you kind of have the business park on either side. It's going to be similar to that, but at a, a smaller scale. Within that business park, there'll be office space. Um, Tahoe is committed, and one of the things that we are, are trying to work on and will continue to work on is finding employers that will come up here. And part of our job will be giving incentives to bring an employer out here. 
and and those are things that we're looking at now. It's hard to um, it's hard to attract that interest right now when we're in the entitlement phase. But once things are moving forward and approved, that's something that we will be doing, and so that we can bring a jobs creation up here to this area. So I'm not sure if that answers your question specifically, but there will be a wide range of jobs. Obviously, you know there'll be you know, county park maintenance, there'll be, you know, all sorts of retail throughout here. Like with your uh, park, a small, um, uh, small manufacturing or small fabrication or something like that, what's the zoning? Is it just commercial? Is it A1 or is it... Uh, is for, it so the commercial out here is M MPD, which allows, yeah, for, for a wide range of both commercial and business park. Okay. And so one of the things that I should say, and maybe I should have started with this, is a part of the Antelope Valley Area Plan is we are required to do a specific plan over the, for this entire project. So that we will work with the County of Los Angeles, which is what we're doing here, on a specific plan. The specific plan allows us to be a little bit more flexible than the exact zoning there. And so the reason for that is so that we can bring the right type of jobs, and if the zoning's not quite right, the specific plan allows us to tweak it so that we can come in. This area right here, this is going, we call this our civic area. We want to bring a medical facility up here, um, and a uh, some sort of community college, you know, uh, second campus. We've had interest from different, yes, sir? The medical facility is 290s? It's about, this is 300, so there's no street here, but that would probably be about 310 or so. <laughs> yes. On the streets, I know we've been working with the county. Uh, 138 is going to either be a four lane or six lane. Four. Four. Four, four up to 300, and 300 to five, it's going to be a six lane. And we were concerned that about crazy. traffic. Right. Mm -hmm. And so what he's talking about, that one line there, they're talking about all the way in the five, so that way they can get in and out of this area without coming down here. And so I was, a lot of us were concerned about all the traffic. So the county came in and gave us the plan. It's an off-ramp that's right here and at three points. So that's the two main off-ramps. The one's right here at the corner of this door and then 300. Yes. So again, there's one at Marigold, Marigold, okay. Marigold, there's one at by Hiker Town where the road dead ends. That's that, uh, yeah. yeah. Okay, and then the, the other one's at 300. Okay. But anyway, on the, on the traffic, it looks like they're solving that problem. The other problem we had was, again, with uh, the parks. We want to make sure we have the parks and also the sheriff station. We've been fighting for a sheriff station since 2010. A lot of us, uh, Bobby Plumley, <coughs> the leader of it, but uh, we couldn't get the first base. We we went to the uh, school board, tried to get the school back in service and have a substation. We even offered to give free rent here to have a substation. I mean, we've had a hard time for the last six years just trying to get a substation for the sheriff and the fire department because we're paying high taxes. Because the fire park, the fire department is so far away. And the, the concern we have, we're the closest residents to this project. I've seen people that come to the meetings that live 45 miles away. They have no idea what we need in this community. And for the last 20 years almost, we've had no service. And even the roads, I mean, Kathy's been working on roads where they're blocked in from the solar. Uh, and again, it's been terrible. And again, we talked about solar because we did not want solar going into here. And again, that's a big concern. The ranch is, I, and I can speak for the ranch on this, the ranch is committed not to do any solar in the oh, Antelope Valley that was a big, and, and no wind. Good. We will not put that on our ranch. Okay, because so, that was a big concern yeah. uh, for everyone because we're seeing what's happening over at Roseman and Kathy was on board. Yeah. It's, it's so ugly now. And Kathy was on the board, and she was with the state and uh, county. County, yeah. Uh, and it's just terrible. Mm -hmm. And this is a beautiful project, and uh, we really don't want to see. Now you're talking solar ranches, not solar for your houses, correct? Houses could, yeah. We're talking uh, when I say that utility level. Yeah, thank you. Utility, That's yeah. utility yeah. level. Thank houses, um, you know, some of the other will, yes, because that will help mitigate. You know, that's good for as far as keeping your costs down on stuff, but they are, they're going to be very visually much better than the utility level where you just 
you know, yeah, yes, sir. The project looks beautiful, and I think that most of the people, of, the people of the community, would love to have it. Mm -hmm. You know, because people living off the grid here with no services, everybody want to have it. But let me tell you what. You know, the solar companies, recurrent energy in particular, coming all the way, just to everybody to know, there is a project that's been approved called Garland Project, all the way to 205, to 240, from 205, approved. They're trying to go all the way to the aqueduct. They're trying to get to 290. So maybe Tajon can come and help us to, you know, to fight those solar. You know, we're trying to do some petitions now and to actually to fight it. And because... What good with all that beautiful city if the bank is just solar? We're going to be the commercial part of the city. The value will be zero here. Everybody leave here, the value is going to be zero. So the city is beautiful. But that your city not going to help nobody over here. If everything is going to be solar around. So maybe Tajon will help us to fight the solar because I think it's the interest of Tajon too that's going to be more clean and beautiful over here than have all these solar. We're not against solar. Put it on the rooftop. There's millions of rooftops all over the all over the state you can yes. put it and have direct link into the grid and take the lot of the grid. So they're grabbing the land and you know, so it's a beautiful plan, but what is about all the solar coming all the way to 300 to 290 where you're at? Yeah, no, that's a great, that's a great point and a great question. We do get notifications being a landowner out here. So when those, you know, when those are proposed, we, you know, they do see our, the lawyers see them and, and uh, you know, the, the company will respond as necessary, but that's that's something great, to, and I think John can write that down for us to consider because, you know, I know for us, and, and I do know that um, Supervisor Antonovich just outlawed wind. Uh, yeah, but they're going on care now. But they're going on care now. Hold on a minute. Let me well, I was just saying, you know, they, he, they did outlaw wind throughout the West Antelope Valley now, and that's done. But there is, solar is still allowed. Yeah, but right? I mean, the problem is with Gabriel. Let me tell you, the solar company came up to his property and said, we want to buy your property. And if you don't sell this property, you're going to be very unhappy because we're coming right against your fence, we're going to block you in, and you're going to have nothing but dust and dirty. So he's kind of upset. So I apologize. Uh, no, no I, I, I understand. But let me tell you, they recurrent energy, for fact, they don't go to Los Angeles County. They know Los Angeles County is a hard time for them. They go to Kern County. All the plans is in Kern County. Right now, people don't aware here. From 205 to 240, everything is sold out going to be. They, they got permit. They got a permit on June. Last year was a hearing. Nobody from this community went to the hearing because nobody know. Because current recurrent energy put a little actually gill is not here, but they put he can say what well, they put they, they put a little stick in the middle of the 2,000 acres. That's what the hearing know is public. Okay, nobody yeah. showed up. They, now they're trying to get all the way. This is all great. So why maybe the Horn will try to make a deal with the community to say, you know, we'll never give you trouble for your town. We'll never make petition against you. We'll never hold up because we like that project. It's a great project. But maybe the Horn, with all the power they have up in Sacramento or whatever, help us to stop this because you're going to look ugly to your town, to the 19,000 new residents you're going to bring. Who want to live when it's all solar development? And and they don't care about the people. They don't give notices to the people. They give notice only if you see the in the middle of the lane and they want to buy you. But if you just border with them, surprise, one day you have a solar project on your fence. Gabriel, uh, hold on a minute. This is the reason we have Ron Gold, who understands all this. And after the meeting, if you want to talk to Ron, right. he agreed to help in the community. Because we have no <laughs> backing from any law enforcement agency, not the attorney, no one. But Ron knows the law. And again, we're honored to have him here. So afterwards, just talk about how, what they did to you, but let's stick kind of with to home right now. <coughs> well, that, that's fine. I, I appreciate that, and I definitely something. Yes, how many elementary schools are you going to have? That's a great point. Oh, I want to get into schools next, if that's okay. okay. Yes, we've been trying to get a school. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, sir. Switch up. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes. Yes, sir. Yeah, okay. Regarding the medical uh, yes. thing, um, that was uh, are you permitted <coughs> to um, get some medical involved? Uh, yes. So, yes. Okay. Let, I like the success. There's a great, a great opportunity to get Loma Linda uh, medical okay. at university. 
if you give them a good deal. I, I think it meant that I said, you didn't think you'd do a deal to work for a new uh, um, medical people. I think they would be willing to put up a satellite. If you that would be great. And, and like I said, so, um, yes. You want me to get in touch with you? With you yeah, you, you could be happy to email me. Um, we have had interest from others. I can't remember if they're one of them. One thing that is hard is because we are not approved yet, you know, they're kind of waiting to see what happens. But that would be something we'd be interested in. Talk to you? I'm not sure if they're one of the ones who have. Get in touch with them. Okay. And I'm doing with them. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Okay, the uh, old school. Um, the, yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. They have the old school and they had like good uh, basketball hoops and stuff. But we're not allowed to play on like the kids. Mm -hmm. So uh, they wouldn't open it for some weird reason. I was just wondering, are you guys going to plan on using that? or? I can answer that. Okay. Uh, we've been working trying to get that school now since 2010. We went to the school board. Uh, I think Joe was involved and in, uh, uh, Mr. Stan, uh, uh, Stan Anderson. We went in front of the school board. And the county said they would help. Nothing happened. Because we said, if we have kids that like to play basketball, we even have the, a junior Olympic for volleyball. They're willing to pay to use the school and fix it. We had them come to our meeting. You remember, Joe? Yeah. The Olympic Committee. And they were willing to fix it where the guys could go and play basketball, volleyball, and use it as a community center and a school. And they turned them down. Even NRG offered to pay for the insurance. So again, we've been trying forever. That's why I'm really excited about our school coming up. But if they could help us with the county to get that school open temporarily, and they have the power to do so with Ron's help, maybe we can go forward if we get a petition with the young guys in our neighborhood. Maybe we can do something if we work with Ron. Because now we have somebody that's willing to help. I mean, it was like hitting my head against the wall since 010. And poor Joe, too. What was their reason for not giving us? Because they're using it for storage. And what happened, this is the reason Ron is important, there was a bond issue. And they raised money on bonds. And we, we're paying for it. A and, lot of bonds. Yeah, and so if you give that school back, or you put it put something else, they want you to pay that money back. Uh -huh. Millions of dollars. Two hundred and some thousand dollars a year they get. And so they're they using that as storage. And they have a caretaker there, and they don't want to give it to us. They want to use it for storage. If you go there, everything is just packed in there, and they're using it as storage. But we're paying for it as taxpayers. That's why did, with Ron, we can go in there and fight back now. But it took us to find somebody like Ron and Bank of America, who's got power, into a home ranch. So it took us six years. We're slow learners out here. But with your help, I think we can do something. Well, and I'll speak to our, our project and what we're bringing. You know, we are, and, and schools I hadn't got to yet because I think it's an important and big subject, we are bringing six elementary schools to our project, as well as a high school, which is this big blue right in the center. And then you can see just north of that high school, I know the colors are a little hard to see, that's a, the, uh, the community park, that's 25 acres of park. So, um, you know, I don't run the school districts on if they'll keep them open or not, but I do know that we are programming these parks to have all sorts of amenities, basketball hoops, softball fields, baseball fields, soccer fields. These are the sort of amenities that the parks will be programmed for um, because that's what we want this community to be about. The other thing I should say is we have these parks, these little green things, and um, about 95% of the community is within one-fourth walking distance of a park. Wow. And so we want this to be able to where you don't have to get in your car and drive to go to a park and drive to take your kids to go play baseball or whatever it is. You can walk. We also have an extensive trail program, these lines that go through here, through these green. Um, there is over 95 miles of trails that are is planned throughout this. <coughs> And so there'll be paseos, you can ride your bikes, you can, and, and this is also very connected to our elementary schools throughout the community. And 
And these are kind of, you know, the concepts, but we want it to be where the trails face the houses, so they're safe trails for your kids to walk to school and to walk to park, and so they're not back behind trees and whatever. It's, it's, it's a, the concept of where eyes are on the trails is what it is. And those are the sort of things we're thinking through because you have the, we have this opportunity when we're starting from scratch to do it right from the beginning. And so um, as, as it's phased out, you bring on the school as it's needed. There'll be a high school, um, not the full facility, but a high school facility within the elementary from day one as well as an elementary school. What yes. about intermediate? No junior high school? They are. I'm oh, sorry. When I say elementary, we're calling them K through 8s. And then okay. high school would be 9. Yeah. I was going to ask if you were going yeah. to keep them K-8s because that's kind of what we do around They are the K-8s. like that. Um, yeah. No. That when I say 6, I said elementary. I should. Sorry. So 6 K through 8s is what I should have What's said. What's the timeline for this project? That's a great question. Real quick, can I? Yes, go ahead. The high school, uh, like the other school, I heard that they shut down because there was not enough kids. Are they going to do that with our high school? Or the high the school one, here? The new one. Like, shut it. Shut it down? Yeah, no, because they're going to be yeah. renting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think what asking, is there going to be enough kids to support this? Because they won't even open ours up. Yes. Because they say there's no kids. No, there, there will. We're, we're working with um, the... I just forgot the West Side School District on it, and and and, and also Gorman. We're talking to both school districts. Will there be enough to open a high school from day one? No. But as the project continues to be phased, there'll be a point that actually we are required to build a high school. Um, the population numbers for 19,000 homes is, is projected to be about 57,000 population at build out. That's 20 years from now. So, but yes, we will have to bring the high school on, and there'll be the population to sustain it, both within the community and within the surrounding areas. You as won't well. see it though. <laughs> You'll be done by then. So that goes to the timeline. That's a great question. <laughs> yeah. So you can still If we yeah. do have uh, high school students moving into the facility, will they go straight to Mount Or will they go to Fort No, we will. We are going to have a high school. Day one, a high school day one, we won't have the facility open day one. So what, what it'll be is um, the first K-8 that we build will actually be built in such a way that it can have a high school and a K-8. It'll be a bigger facility, so it's separated. We can't just open ours up. Yeah, we're going to try it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We're going to try and get ours open up. And that's what she said. saying that we need your help. Okay. Because if, I think if they just did some improvement, on this one, and from day one, you have the facility, I mean, it's less building while you're incorporating yours, mm -hmm. I think it would help, because it would keep them all down, okay. choices or whatever. Maybe, that's a lot. <laughs> yeah, maybe, maybe use it as a substation for the sheriff while we're waiting for the other sheriff station. Well, I know they don't want to just give it back to us, but can't they, have they ever considered maybe opening up a, a charter school? We tried that too. Because then there's a lot of homeschooled people that would probably take part in some, some part of that. That's something we should talk to them about and then again talk to Ron. Timing? Yeah, yes. timeline. What is the question so that, about that? That's a great, that's a great okay, question. No, one second before you answer. Uh -huh. In this timeline, if you can include, please, what happened when you're going to start grade? And when you grade, with there is a lot of valley fever, what are you going to do about that? Because the wind blowing west to east, most likely. So there is a lot of older people, a lot of young, valley fever, big problem. So what do you do? And when you start grading the first phase? Yep. No, great question. We've been asked this many times. So what I can say about valley fever is I don't have all the specifics me right now today, but our environmental impact report, which will be coming out for public review, does address it. We are having the experts write on that and what will happen is we will have certain mitigation measures that we have to meet as far as how the construction can do, how do you keep the dust down, how do you know what times, how how long can you grade. Those are all within our EIR, the Environmental Impact Report, to make sure that we are meeting the standards. So I know, and I, I know because we've been told what some of the uh, utility companies came in and what they did and those the dust clouds that you saw for miles. We have been told that, we know that, and, and we are going to be um, we are going to be different than that. We're yeah, don't forget that, that you know when you build your city and you still have all the solar, the dust clouds gonna to come to your city too. Yeah. No, I I know. So for as far as timing, we are working with the county 
um, on our EIR and specific plan right now. We plan to have that out for public review in 2016. Um, I know for those who have been stuck with us for this long, you've heard that probably two, three, four, or five times by now. But uh, we are making progress, and we are working on that. Um, what happens in that is that gives everyone in this room and anybody, and, and Richard kind of spoke to it earlier, we'd love